What's going on everybody, this is Delroy and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Teal 5 augmented reality glasses, but with a big emphasis on development, as well as how to set up the hardware. We're also going to be creating a small project for each one of the development tools that we're going to be covering today. Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to kick this off and let's review three different ways to develop with the Teal 5 system today. The first one is by using the native CSDK which provides an NDK, a native development kit, where you can develop with C or C++. This could be useful if you're using your own game engine, or maybe you have tools that need to integrate directly into Teal 5 without actually having to use Unreal or Unity. The next dev tool is Unity SDK, which provides a comprehensive set of features, Unity demos, and a very detailed SDK documentation. Honestly, there's a lot of features available in the Unity SDK. Lastly, we have Unreal SDK, as I mentioned previously, which we're also going to be covering today. So which of these three options are the best for Teal 5 development? Well, that really depends on your development needs and use cases. To me, I would stay with Unity because there seems to be more detailed examples, also flexibility by using the Unity SDK and C Sharp. Unreal looks great, I think for photorealistic experiences, which would be perfect, and also for enterprise applications. NDK sounds fun, but in my case, it's not really very practical. But honestly, what you choose really depends on your existing development talent or talent that you might acquire in the near future. All right, guys, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can set up the augmented reality glasses by using a PC. Currently, Windows 10 is supported, also Windows 11, which is what I'm gonna be using. Mac OS supports is also coming in 2024, according to the documentation. All right, guys, the first thing that we're gonna do, let's go ahead and go into downloads and then click on drivers. This is where we're going to be setting up the TIL5 so that we have the drivers to communicate with the device. Just go ahead and hit next, next, and then install. Okay, it looks like it's already installed and you can see that I have the game board set up. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the glasses to the cable that comes with the device and just connect it to the glasses first and then there's also going to be a connection to the computer. In my case, I'm using a PC and then we're also going to be pairing the one. Now, if you want to basically make an experience, we can download either the Unity SDK, Native C, or the Unreal SDK. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by downloading the SDK, which includes the native part and also the Unity examples and the Unity SDK. For the Unreal, I'm going to be including a different link on the description, but you can also get it from the website. So just go ahead and click next here and then install everything, which is going to be put into program files and then till five. Once it gets set up, there's gonna be the location that you always have to remember because if you want to refer to different examples, you can always go here. Here's where we have a demo to set up the, basically to test the glasses. You can also look at the driver and the SDK, the native SDK is here, also Unity examples, which is what I'm going to basically just show you now. And then once you extract it, there's going to be a project in here, which you can open it in Unity. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and create a brand new Unity project. I'm gonna call it Teal5. Hello, just go ahead and designate your location and just click on Create. Once you click on Create, we're also going to be bringing the Teal5 plugin. It's gonna be in that same directory that I showed you previously. Just click on Import. And then once you hit Import, you're gonna see that we have a bunch of different things inside the Teal5. We're also going to be getting rid of the camera and also the light. Just go ahead and drag and drop the Teal5 prefab which includes the manager, the port, and also the main camera. One thing that you wanna make sure, make sure that you make the Teal5 camera the main camera as the tag, otherwise things are not gonna work. But you can see how player one relates to player one on the Teal5 2 manager, and also, we can also change the content scale. So it's a lot of really cool features and really easy to implement. So let's go ahead and create a new cube so that we can test an experience. Basically just gonna be changing the color and also changing the position of the cube. It's gonna head and set it to 0.5 on the y-axis. And I think this looks good. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a player though so that we can control how the cube basically move around and how the color changes. Now in the package manager, we're going to be bringing in the input system because that's how we're going to be you know, implementing this. They support the old input system and also the new input system. It's a lot easier to implement it on the new input system. It's probably about the same, but I recommend going new since that's where Unity is going into. So now in your player, let's go ahead and add a player input manager. Make sure you set the joining behavior to join players manually. And then once we get it set up, now we can add the player input, which is going to be have to be associated with an actual input action asset. And these are just different behaviors that you can map some of these actions to. Let's go ahead and create a new input action. So it's going to create a folder here called input actions. And then inside of the folder, we're going to be creating our new input actions. And this is going to be an asset, and this asset is going to have all the different bindings to the controllers that the TIL5 SDK is exposing. Okay, so once you do that, now the next thing that I'm going to do is in the new script, which is going to be called Input System Action Maps, we're going to be controlling how the queue moves and also how we change the colors. So let's go ahead and add it and associate it to our player. But we can also designate this in the inspector. And I'm also going to be adding the associating the cube to the cube object. We don't really need to get it with the game object that finds, so we can just go ahead and get rid of that since we are making it serializable in this area. So we can just get rid of that method completely and then just associate it through the inspector. That's just you know more consistent with everything else. Let's go ahead and test it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be bringing in the started assets and this is going to be one that we're going to be using for a game prototype that I created. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to bring a game, basically an existing game into TIL5. So in this case, this asset is using URP. So I'm just going to have to change all of these to use URP. So let's just create a new universal rendering pipeline asset. And then once you create it, we can just go ahead and go into file build settings, player settings and then add this scene just to make sure. And then go into graphics and then just associate the one. You can use the one that they have in the asset or you can just use the one that we just created. So once you get it all converted and now using your P, I'm just gonna go ahead and clone the playground scene that the Unity team provides and then we just rename it and then make sure that it is under our scenes folder. Double click on it to open it. And it's going to be very, you know, very common of something that you've seen before. I use these for a lot of different things. So anyways, we're just going to go ahead and remove some things that we don't need. We don't need the main camera. We don't need the actually also remove the UI canvas starting as an inputs. Also, we don't need the event system, at least not for what I want to show you. We're just going to keep it simple with our, with our player armature environment and lighting. You can see that everything, you know, everything looks just normal. And then we don't have a camera yet, so we're going to have to add also a camera. But first, let's make this a prefab because we're going to be associating that with the actual prefab that TIL5 provides. So what I want to show you here is we also have player inputs and also actions. So let's make this also a prefab before we keep going. And then rename it just to keep it clean and consistent. It looks good so far. I think I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it so that when we have the board, basically the character is going to be facing us. We can do negative 180. I think that's fine. So if we drag and drop the TIL5 prefab into our hierarchy, you can now see that we can see the board. And that's just a gizmos and, you know, it depends on whether you want to show that or not. I think it always shows, but you can also toggle it off and on if you want to do that. And then I think I'm just going to move the environment a little bit so that everything is better aligned. And we can just change it and move it a tiny bit. But before we do that, let's go ahead and change the content scale. You can see how, as I scale that, 
the board also scale. So that is a very important setting that you know you can change based on the size of your environment. And now I think I think this looks clean. And the board is pretty close to the size of the environment, so it really depends on what you want to create. And then I'm also going to be moving the player armature and let's just move a little bit out of the shadows. Move a little bit more. Maybe negative three I think works just fine. And then I don't have any overrides, so it looks like we're good to go there. And then for the glasses, though, we now need to go ahead and associate the prefab, and we're gonna be associating that to the player template. You're gonna see that it's gonna be carried out to all different players. And multiplayer is available out of the box with till five, which is really great. So we also need to add a processor because there's gonna be a dead zone on the stick. If you don't add that, it's not going to, it's going to move the character where you don't want it to move. I ended up adding multiple players. I changed the color of some of the players. I have a green, a red, and also a gray. I also have a progress bar on the very top. So basically just expanded this. And I also ended up adding a gun because I wanted to have that with my kids so that we can play this experience and see how, you know, how many zombies that we kill. I also added that do twin so that we can basically mimic the vibration of the gun and also some particle effects on the basically where the bullet comes out. And this is you know how the bullet looks like. Some of these assets I got from the Unity Asset Store, so I'll just be you know showing where those are in the description. And this is just a demo of how the bullet is coded. It's very, very simple. And then I also have how the characters, the enemy, actually are going to be you know affecting when we get damage as a player. And you can see they have the player manager in there. And then I also have a player name, how many players we kill, the how many lives a player has, and also affects the progress. So that's all coded, and it works for all different players. So you can change the life, and that's going to be changing the progress bar or the health in you know in real time. You can see how the update player health is all coded in here, and it's very simple. I could probably just put that in a different class, but for now it's in the player manager. I also ended up adding an object pool so that we could basically spawn all the different zombies at the beginning and the game was going to be more performant. And this is how the zombies look like. I didn't have time to add the progress to the zombies, the health look and feel that I had on the players. But I think, you know, for now that works. I also have a nav mesh agent on each one of the zombies and then also an enemy manager, which handles the, you know, all the information that we need to keep track about the zombies. And you can see now here, we can see also the nav mesh surface, which is basically very simple. I just grab and selected everything and then just created a nav mesh out of it. You can see now that I can, you know, I can shoot. The players are basically following me and it's a very simple experience, but I, I'm using the controller on the TL5 and everything, you know, works as expected. So I also wanted to implement an example for the Unreal Game Engine, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. Just make sure that you extract the zip file that I'm going to be putting in the description. Once you do that, it's going to be basically creating a folder that has a TIL5 folder, and that's basically the plugin that TIL5 is going to provide. There's gonna be also, that plugin is gonna be put into a specific engine folder, so just go into your engine folder, and then go into plugins, and basically you can just paste it in here. I already had it in there, so, but that's basically what you had to do. For now, that is manually, it's not in the marketplace for some reason, but you can, it's pretty easy to set up. Then go ahead and launch 5.1. In my case, that's what I'm gonna be using. You can use 4.7, or by the time that you watch this video, there might be a newer version. And then let's just go ahead and create a new project. I call it till 5 demo. In the content folder, we're going to be creating a couple folders. I'm gonna create a character folder. 
I'm also going to be creating a maps folder, which is going to be, you know, what a scene is in Unity. And then I'm also going to be creating an input folder so that we have all the different actions that we're going to need. Then to enable the plugin, just go into plugins and then just go ahead and enable the Tilt 5 plugin. It's going to have you restart the engine. So once you restart it, you should be good to go. And you can see that Tilt 5 is still enabled. Now, the next thing that we need to do, though, is we need to make sure that we have DirectX 11 enabled. DirectX 12 causes a lot of problems, so just make sure that you have that enabled. So the next thing that you need to do, though, after restarts, you're going to have to go into Engine and then Plugins. So you're going to see that we have the Tilfy content. In here, we have a pawn that we can actually use. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. And I'm going to put it under my Character folder. And this is going to be the one that we're going to be working off. And it has the one, it has the camera, it has the game board. Basically, it has everything that we need out of the box, which is great. So now let's go ahead and close it. And I'm going to go into Maps and create a new level. And in this case, it's going to call it Main World. And we can just go ahead and save it. And this is going to be the one that we're going to be using. There's actually a better looking one. So we can go into New and then Basic. And then we can just override that one that we just created. I think it just has better lighting. So it's going to go ahead and override it and it's going to be that one that we use for this demo then if you go into game mode base and we're going to be creating a new game mode in this case we're going to be creating a game mode so just go ahead and rename it in my case i'm going to use main the game mode and this is where we're going to be telling the engine that we're going to be using the teal 5 pawn and i'm not 100 percent familiar with or super familiar with unreal but trust me this is going to work so if we go back into the game mode and just go ahead and click on edit now here we can set the default pawn class and I'm going to be associating that with the pawn that we just copied from the plugin. So now we can just go ahead and close out of that and now we can just go ahead and test it. Everything should work. We have the one working and so that's good to go. So now if we go and create a new input action, it's going to be what we use for movement, what we use for also restoring the positions and rotations of the cubes. I just wanted to create a simple experience to show you how to do that. Also going to be renaming here and giving giving it a description and also mapping the value type to a vector 2D. And then I'm also going to be doing the same thing on the restore. Go ahead and map it. And I think in this case, using a bull, it's fine because we're going to be using the trigger button for that. The movement is going to be used with the stick. So the next thing is just go ahead and create a, a new input mapping context. And in this case, I'm going to be mapping those to the actual input actions that we created. Here's what we tell it, okay, what is the TIL51 controller that we're going to be using? We're going to be using the 2D axis and also the, in this case, we're going to be using the trigger button. Just, so just go ahead and select that as well. Now we can go ahead and hit save and then we can just close out of this. So we need to add the event tick and this section here is so that we can basically enable the controller on this blueprint, basically on this pawn. So we need to cast this to a player controller. We also need to get the controller. So this is pretty standard. Don't get to, you know, to worry about it. I, all the articles that I found, all the videos that I saw do it this way. So once you do it once, it's going to be very simple. So basically we cast it to a player controller. We get a player controller and then we map the player controller to an enhanced input player subsystem. And then here we can just make sure that we add a mapping context. And in this case, we need to map the, the actual enhanced input local player subsystem to the target on the actual mapping context. And then the mapping context is going to be the IMC default, which is the one that we just created. So this should enable now input on this blueprint. And you can see now when whenever I do the trigger bond that shows whenever I move the stick, it shows that information as well. So, but that's not fun, right? Let's go ahead and add a couple of different cubes in here. I'm going to be adding this one and we can just do 0.25 all the way across. Let's see if that is big enough. I think that's too big. Let's go ahead and make it 0.1 all the way across. And we can copy, paste, copy, paste. It looks like, I think that looks fine. Go ahead and move it up a little bit. And then I'm going to put it right behind the camera because it's going to make it look a lot better. And then I'm going to name these ones cube underscore one. And let me see, we can also add a tag. And I'm going to add a tag because on the blueprint, we're going to be getting these objects by using a method that's going to give us the objects by tag. And the tag is going to be interactable. And then we also need to enable 
physics. I'm also going to be changing some of these values on the physics. You can also change the damping. And then the last thing that I'm also going to do is just go ahead and uncheck enable gravity because I, I don't want him to fall on the game board. Now, if you go into world settings, though, this is going to be similar to what Unity has as the content scale. If you change it to a value that is larger, then the board is going to be a lot smaller. In my case, that's too small. So let's go ahead and change it to 200. And then we can go ahead and hit play. You can see that now this reflects, you know, closer to what it would look in the physical world. So the last piece is the C and C++. I didn't get a chance to create a demo for this, but there is a lot of documentation that will show you how you can implement that and also how you can run some of the examples that are included in the native folder of the SDK that we downloaded. And these are just some of the methods that are available on the C++ class that they provide as an example. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you have any questions about development with TIL5, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel because it's going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you very much, guys.